<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to a new trail preview. Today I'm in Whistler with Mike Douglas. He's the godfather of freestyle skiing and he's gonna take us on one of his favorite trail. What is it? Uh, this is business time near my backyard right here in Whistler. Let's go. Okay, business time. Yeah, Duncan McKenzie, the legend, built this trail and then he sadly passed away in an avalanche and uh, his buddies came out and finished this thing off and it's one of my favorite trails here in Whistler. So how come you're on a mountain bike and not a pair of skis? Well, there's no snow right now. So I ski probably like 100, 120 days a year here in Whistler, but when there's no snow, I can almost always be found on my mountain bike. Probably bike about four or five days a week from April right through to November. And, uh, you know, I'm getting a little bit older. I'm not a young guy anymore, I'm 50. So I'm a little bit mellow on the bike compared to Remy and, and a lot of the people you're gonna see in this series, but, uh, but I love it. I love getting out there and, and getting the lungs working and the legs working and scaring myself a little bit. So pretty fun. So Mike, what's your career highlight? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the thing I'm most proud of in my career is just how long I've been able to keep it going. I've been a, a paid pro skier now for 30 years, which is, I didn't even think was possible. And man, along the way, there's been, there's been a ton. Um, I was on the Canadian freestyle ski team for moguls for a while and, and almost got to go to the Olympics in 94. Um, you know, helped create the Solomon 1080, the first twin tip ski. Won the Skier of the Year at the Powder Awards in 2003. Um, won the K2 Back 9 competition in 2006, I think it was. And those, those are all like highlights along the way, little high points, but just getting to travel around the world and, and film and ski and, and make a living doing something that I totally love. I mean, that's all you can really ask for, I think. Okay, and just for the little story, I actually, before mountain biking, I've always been a huge ski fan. And uh, I used to watch uh, Mike uh, on VHS, it was not even DVDs. Yeah. So it was, I guess, in 94, 95, maybe 96, doing like the first backflip drops, like double backflips, 360 drop, anything you can possibly imagine on skis. And uh, yeah, now I, I get to ride my bike with you. So it's pretty crazy. Well, it'll be kind of slow-mo for you, but I'll, uh, I'll do my best to at least uh, give you good well, down this trail. When we ski together, that will be slow-mo for you. <laughs> All right, let's go, business time. So start of the trail. Oh, some nice woodwork. So it's pretty mellow, but uh, as Mike was saying, the dirt is pretty sandy and so you can ride that trail in basically any condition. So it's gonna be pretty cool. It's a good trail for the fall or the spring. Yeah. That's a fun track. Yeah. Some skinnies. A little punchy up there. Yeah. Here. I remember this part. Woo. Right. And I guess the guys used to raise that in the uh, Angel World Series. Maybe, yeah. I mean. It's got really good grippy dirt right now because everything else is pretty wet and slippery so this is always a good go-to ride in the fall when it's getting cold out. Yeah, yesterday actually I was all the way up there with Georgia yeah. riding working class Yeah. and that's even though it's just right there it's a totally different dirt not nearly as much grip and uh, yeah that's awesome. On to the second part of business time yeah, oh that's fun. <laughs> Try to take a different line here. Yes. Nice. Oh yeah, this one will catch your pedal. Really important to look super far away. Yeah, a little inside here. Yeah, buddy. Oh yeah, it's actually super fun how the builder used the terrain just to make it like a bit more turny. Uh, 
up a bit of sprinting here. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's the kind of trail I really like. You don't have to go really fast too often. You can really cruise, look ahead, and play with the rocks. Okay. And now it sounds like we're going uphill for a while. Going up for a bit here. Woo. Huge respect for the Enduro World Racer. Yeah. What to sprint up that? Even uh, even without trying to go fast, it's still a, a big workout. Yeah. Okay, here we go again. Yes. Little tight tucks in here. Okay. Tight corners. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Tight through here. Oh wow. I don't remember that part. <laughs> Getting help from the trees. Yeah, well, well there's no rules that say you can do it. Oops, Oops sorry. A little ease off the gas here. Yeah, just to catch up the breath. That would be such a difficult stage. Yeah. Okay, tricky little punchy uphill. Okay. Make it inside to out. Oh! Oh! Ha! Oh. Oh. Ah! <laughs> How are you, man? Woo. That's a good one. Yeah. You ran me out of gas. <laughs> well, you must be uh, pretty fit to be able to ski, you know, big drops and huge lines like that without stopping. This is harder. <laughs> yeah, so when I ride my downhill bike or my trail bike, as long as I'm not pushing hard, when I go downhill, I feel like I don't really use uh, much effort on my legs. I can do like top to bottom laps and obviously my arms and my hands get really tired but my leg really doesn't get tired until I pedal. Yeah. So I'm pretty good at absorbing impact but when I go on my skis I have jelly legs after 30 seconds. <laughs> See I'm the opposite like when I ski I'm really good at conserving energy and being efficient when I'm on my bike it's definitely a little tougher. Well, I'm definitely feeling the Remy pressure today because uh, I never screw this up and today I freaking blew it. So, going back for a redo. Try number two for Mike Douglas. Opening his corner, going on the inside. Yeah, and good power. Easy. There it is. No, I mean, I noticed that when I'm riding with you, like just that little bit of extra pressure, it's, I feel like I'm working harder and so, I usually get to this punchy little uphill and I feel like I have the energy and today I got here and I felt like super gas, but I, well, I don't know, what am I doing wrong? It's probably the same thing if I was to ski with you. <laughs> so, you know, like me, when I, when I ride uh, downhill or like trail bike going downhill, what I try to do is to be as efficient as I can. And so I try to ride chainless. 
So I try to pretend like I don't have a chain. So that way that forced me to look ahead and really anticipate every single fixture, every single corner and obstacle. So I can make the best decision for having the safest and fastest line. Um, if you don't have a chain, you can't make mistakes, right? Yeah. Because if you make a mistake, you can't pedal to catch up. So that's why what you should be doing is, you know, put a gear kind of middle of the cassette where if you need to pedal for an appeal, you can. But also if you don't have to pedal, that way there is less tension on your rear there. And so the suspension can work better. Mm -hmm. Because when you're on a small gear, what, what uh, happens is that your rear there is actually pretty tight and mm -hmm. the chain pulls on the suspension. So your suspension ah. doesn't work as freely. And so you kind of lose a little bit of performance. Yeah. So I try to be middle of the cassette most of the time. And I try to really, it's all about picking up the best line. And if you look ahead, you can do that. You can really relax and you can see stuff coming and you can really adapt your position. You can adapt, uh, you know, your line. And I think that will help you a lot. Some of the mistakes that I see you doing is because you don't look far enough ahead. I see you breaking in the corner and where you should be breaking before your corner. And so then you can set up in your corner and carry speed out of the corner. So what matters is not how fast you come in the corner, but it's how fast you exit your corner. Right. So try that, try to okay. look ahead, break more before the corner, look at your corner. And when you have the right speed, you let your brakes go and you carry a nice speed outside of the corner. And when you come to an uphill like this, that would help you a lot because You've looked ahead and you've carried speed out of the corner and then you gain momentum for those little punching climbs. Cool. Okay, see if this flow thing can work. Yeah. You ready? Go for it. All right, here we go. Look ahead, pick up good line and try not to pedal. Uh, ah, I saw you pedaling. Yeah. So you break before the corner and then you let go. Hey, how are you? Good, yeah, good on you. Yeah. So now you're coming to the appeal with a little bit more strength because you haven't pedaled as much. Yeah, I made a, a couple of mistakes in there, but. I felt better on a couple of quarters too. Yeah. I think what can help you is to take a few bike park days and you literally go without a chain. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I usually take a little break around here because the big uphill is coming. Yeah, I uh I don't have any problem with that. <laughs> I'm actually not sure I even uh, rode this trail before. Maybe you went down here. Yeah. Yes. Could be. It is not the most friendly appeal I've done, but yeah. definitely one of the prettiest. Yeah. Right down here. Up on my front wheel just to set up the rear. Yeah, buddy. So it's end of October right now, and the conditions are pretty perfect. It's cold, but to be honest, the uphill was so hard that it's not too bad. Yeah, trying to jump at the outside of that corner to get some support. Wow, we made it. Okay, now on to the downhill. Definitely a bit different. Got some more rock faces. Oh yeah. Taking a different line. Yeah. Nice. Super fun. Wall rider. Right 
Whoa. I thought my bar was not gonna fit, even though ah, my shoulder didn't fit. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't see that. Oh yeah! Nice! That was awesome dude. Cool. I saw you in between those two trees. Uh, I don't know why I just I went like panic mode uh -huh. and like tensed. Thought I was gonna touch the tree. Somehow made it in between the trees. Ten meters later I didn't see the tree and I just smoked my uh, oh, my shoulder on the tree. <laughs> shit. That's an awesome part. Yeah, yeah. Super yeah. cool how there is those different lines. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Okay, here we go again. Super beautiful forest. Oh yeah. It's pretty fun, like you can really play with the rocks here. Oh, I would have gone straight if I had been around. A bit darker here. Definitely a bit more slippery as well. Yeah. Yeah, good one. Oh, that's slippery. Oh, look at that. Onto the wet wood, no problem. Yeah. Wow, that trail is tight. That's too tight, wide here. Whoa. Oh, oh. Try to take like a bit of a sneaky line here. Yeah. You good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably would have catch me as well. Yeah, it's a sneaky one. Yeah, it's really a cool trail. You can really find some flow here. Oh, and some mugs. Oh, here. Ooh. Someone's gonna need some new pedals. Oh, I managed to stay dry the entire time until now. Yeah, yeah buddy. Alright. Good one. Business time. Thanks for the lap. That was Thank awesome. You. Thanks for pushing me. Yeah, and oh. that's uh, just for the little story. That's uh, Jesse Melamed old bike. That's right, Jesse and I have a deal going where he hooks me up with deals on his old racing bikes and I hook him up with ski gear, so works out pretty well. Yeah, good deals make uh, good friends. Yeah. I had a ton of fun riding that. Yeah. You can really find flow on that trail. Yeah. Once you know it a little, there's some sneaky sneaky corners, but like... There is, yeah. You have to ride that trail like, you know, slower than what you can do in yeah. order to really pump every single... Like it will be impossible to ride that trail at the limit. Mm because it's such a long physical trail and it's, it's not that steep. So if you make a mistake to recover, it's really hard. Yeah. So you'll have to really look ahead and take your time and pick the best line. Well, and I'm, be glad, sure. I'm glad to hear you say that because I was trying to push a little bit and I was making more mistakes than normal just because I'm 
Yeah. Don't want to ride slow, but I think trying to ride fast made me ride slow in the end. <laughs> On some trails, you really have to push in order to go fast. On some of the trail, it's just about, you know, riding precise. Yeah. Just because they are tough and long and... Yeah. Get to be skiing soon, I hope. I like mountain biking and all, but I think I like skiing more. <laughs> Thanks a lot guys for watching this video. Thank you so much Mike for showing me business time. Hopefully we get to ski together this winter. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel, and you can purchase any of the product I'm writing using one of the link in the description. I think that's it. See you next time on YouTube.